everyone, it's Jessica. Thank you so much for being here today. So today I'm going to create a one page layout for this picture of my daughter on the first day of school this year. And I thought this would be the perfect opportunity to use some of my new Daisy Daisy collection from Close to My Heart. I've got the thin cuts and this really pretty stamp set and then the paper pack and the sticker sheet. So I will leave links to everything down below that is available. This is a special that's running through the end of March. And I just think that these papers are so beautiful. I love the greens with that pink and the white. I think it just pops. Um, and let's talk about that green gingham because I am just dying over it. Such a gorgeous paper pack and the stickers are awesome as well. I thought that they would be perfect for this photo. And so I am going to use the pattern two from Make It From Your Heart Volume 5. Uh, really this pattern just involves cutting a whole bunch of strips of paper. So I'll take a little bit of time to go through and cut my papers according to those pattern directions. So if you've got some scraps, uh, really for this pattern, you need like one inch pieces and a bunch of half inch pieces. Um, and you could probably even cheat a little bit and have them not as long either because a lot of them are gonna be covered in the middle by the photo. So another thing I'm gonna do before I get started here is just take a little bit of time to edge distress all of my papers. I like to use coordinating ink colors. So anything that's pink, I use my pink pad. Anything that's green, I use my clover pad and so on and so forth. I am also going to dovetail this three inch piece of paper. Um, I'm gonna gently fold it in half so I don't get a crease. And then I am going to cut up the center and then from corner to corner. I was about to just eyeball it when I realized, you know what, I could probably count all of my squares here and actually figure out where the center is for real. Uh, so that was kind of handy um, that I was able to figure out where the center was without getting out a ruler. But normally I just eyeball that. Um, I like to just, like I said, cut up the middle and then come from corner to corner. And now I have both ends exactly the same. So I'll finish edge distressing the rest of my papers and begin assembling. So I thought uh, maybe I would work smarter and not harder um, because I have so many strips here and I want to kind of move them around a little bit and think about possibly doing a little bit of stamping on my base page. So I thought what I would do is take a strip of a scrap paper and put some adhesive on it and then just line these up. It's just enough to tack them all in place in the order that they go so that I can move it as one piece rather than having, I don't even know how many strips of paper this is. It's a lot. Um, and so that just seems like a smarter way to kind of go about creating this page, um, especially because like I said, I wanted to play with it a little bit and see if I was going to stamp something on the base page uh, before I glue it down. So um, I just made sure to line up the bottoms of all of the pieces. And like I said, it's just tacked down enough to keep things in place. Um, and I will be uh, more generous with my adhesive when I go to put this on my paper. Let me snip off that extra and there, now I can move this all as one. So let's bring in that piece of white daisy again. And like I said, now I can move this around a little bit. It's gonna go centered there. And then we've got this strip here. I love that gingham pattern. And then the photo goes right in the center. So like I said, you can see here, this is the perfect kind of pattern to use if you have a bunch of tiny scraps that are left over. All right, then we're also going to use a two and a half inch circle. I've just cut mine out of some clover cardstock. And in the photo of the pattern, it shows to put it down um, at the bottom there. But I do have, there's like just a little bit of um, some of my flowers showing on that part of the photo and they're pink. And I really didn't wanna lose that like tiny touch of pink over to the left-hand side of my picture. So I'm not quite sure yet about that circle and, and how I'm going to layer over top of my photo because I, I really don't wanna lose that touch of pink. And then one of the things that I like to do when I'm not sure about what stamps I'm going to use is I do pull the stamp right off the carrier sheet so that way I could just see the printed part on the carrier sheet and I get a better feel that way of kind of like holding it over um, my page if, I, if that's the image that I want to use. So I think it'll be fun to do that one bunch of daisies and fussy cut them out 
and put them right over top of that circle. So I think that's the direction I'm gonna go in. And then I'm gonna stamp that other one as well um, and possibly use it up to the right-hand side of my page. Then I think, well, maybe I should just do it with the thin cuts rather than the stamps. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and create all of them and then that way I can play with them uh, when I'm ready to embellish my page. So I've gone ahead and stamped all of these using my Intense Black ink pad because I am going to use my alcohol markers to color over them and that is the ink that won't smear. Um, so I'm just adding a touch of green to the stems here and then I don't really wanna color in the entire flower. So I'm gonna concentrate mostly on the green for the stems and then a little bit of pink in the center of the flowers. And then I'm gonna grab my pink shimmer brush and just add a touch of color coming out from the center of all of my flowers here. And I'll hold it up here for you in a second. It turns out so pretty. Um, it still, for the most part, looks white, but there's just a hint of color there and a whole lot of sparkle and shine. Um, and I really liked the way that that turned out. So I have a feeling um, I will probably be using my shimmer brush on these flowers quite a bit moving forward. So here, I'll hold it up for you. Isn't that so pretty? It's just the perfect like soft touch of color there in the center. All right, and I did the same thing on this bunch of daisies as well. Um, so sparkly, I love that. All right, so now I've created a whole bunch of pieces, including those thin cuts. Um, because like I said, I'm not sure how I want to embellish it, but this way I have things ready to go and I can play with it a little bit. I'm gonna put a little bit of adhesive on the back of my page just so that um, this base stays put where it needs to be on my Versamat. Um, I'm gonna bring in my T-square ruler to make sure everything goes on straight. And if my, pa my page is not down straight, then nothing's gonna be straight. So I like that trick. Um, and then here I'm just going to kind of get a general idea of laying things out. Like I said, I want to be careful about that green circle. You can see those pink flowers there in my photo. Um, and then, I don't know, I'm not really feeling my die cuts. I think I'm going to go with the stamped image instead. Um, but on those die cut pieces that I did prepare ahead of time, I just layered a whole bunch of them together so that way I have lots of petals. And then I did use my uh, liquid pearls in the black color to add some dots to the center. I think that's what daisies look like. I don't know, I don't actually have a green thumb, but I was trying to make them realistic if possible. Um, and then this particular stamp set does not have uh, coordinating dies, so I just spend a little bit of time fussy cutting that image out. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and go with that plan right there and keeping it over top of that circle. And then I'm like, oh, you know what? I might bring in a couple of stickers from the sticker sheet as well. So I try a um, couple more of my flowers that I fussy cut out. Um, I think I need more pink over there. I've got that pink up in the top right corner and I, I need some more pink over in that other bunch. So that's kind of, I'm thinking maybe that flower or one of the stickers. But before I glue anything down, um, I do want to add a little bit of background stamping uh, from behind where I'm going to layer those flowers. So this is the background element stamp. It's a lot of fun, just it has a lot of splatters or fun things that you can stamp for some background texture. And I'm gonna stamp a couple of splatters in clover ink over where these flowers are gonna go. And then I will repeat that same stamping down in the bottom left-hand corner over by where that circle is. And I think that that's gonna help to make a nice diagonal across the page. So I'm not really doing much of a visual triangle on this layout, but more so of a diagonal is my thought. So like I said, I've got everything uh, stuck down to my Versamance to make sure that this is straight. And then I am going to be very generous with my adhesive on each individual strip um, because I do have them tacked together, but they're kind of floppy. And I wanna make sure that when I put them down to the page that everything, um, they're not gonna have like any gaps or anything in between them. So I'm very careful to lay them down uh, starting from the left-hand side and then moving my way over to the right. I'm just making sure that everything is tucked up tight to each other before pressing down firmly on that adhesive. So you can see I'm just going one strip at a time before I push it down on that adhesive, uh, making sure, and this, of course, this final little piece wanted to wiggle over a little bit, um, but there we go. All right, and then we'll put that green gingham down over the center 
I had forgotten uh, what I had cut them to. So I was just doing a little bit of math and measuring uh, so that I could figure out, okay, if this is three inches, then where would center be? Um, and so that's what I was doing with all of those pieces is just measuring exactly where they would need to go. And that's what I love about the Versamat and the T-square ruler. Not only does it keep it straight, it keeps it um, where, where it needs to be lined up according to the pattern. So we'll get that down centered and then the photo goes on top. All right, I added a little bit of thin 3D foam tape underneath that cluster there, and I'm gonna put that over my green circle. Um, you can see I was careful to make sure that I could still see the pink flowers in my photo. And then I'll put a little bit more thin 3D foam tape behind this big daisy. Um, I am happy that I went with the stamped one as opposed to the thin cuts. Um, I liked that the stamped one had a lot more black to it, um, you know, the stamped lines on it. I thought that that helped to make it stand out from the white of the base of my page there, um, whereas those thin cut ones were just really white and they didn't pop as much as having uh, that stamped image. So that was why I decided to do that. And then for the leaves that I also fussy cut out, I did take my light green marker and very carefully trace over the veins just to add a little bit more uh, shadowing and dimension to those. All right, and I'm back to that little cluster on the bottom left. Like I said, I know that I wanna have just a little bit more pink over there, um, but I just feel like that flower was not, not quite doing it. So I'm gonna go back again to the sticker sheet to see what I can find. And there are a lot of good options on here. This is a gorgeous sticker sheet. Um, so I spend quite a bit of time kind of playing around, messing with it. Um, but I do decide to go with this fun circle. Um, now, you know, really this page isn't screaming first day of school to me, but that's okay. It's just a really lovely picture of my daughter on the first day of third grade. Um, and, and so that's okay. You know, I'm going to uh, probably use her school photo that, that the school did. Um, and when I scrapbook that to kind of put some of the details about her teacher and what year it was and all of that. So even though it's the first day of school layout, I'm just kind of making it a pretty sitting with the flowers on the front porch kind of layout. All right, I thought it would be fun to tie a little bow around the stems of those flowers down there. So I pulled out some of my embroidery thread in a color that matches that clover green. And I did have to thread a needle to slide it underneath uh, to get behind uh, my foam tape there. Um, and then I'm just gonna fuss with that bow. And then, and then what? Um, I feel like it's not quite done yet, but I'm not sure what to do. So I don't know, it just feels like it needs something else, but I don't know what else to do. So this is why I decide I'm going to grab a black pen and I'm going to add a doodle border all the way around. And I find that whenever I have a layout that is giving me this feeling of, you know, I'm done with my embellishing and I don't really know what else to add, but it just still doesn't feel quite complete yet. Either, you know, trimming off a little bit and then matting it on a darker piece of cardstock or adding a doodle border is sometimes all it needs uh, just to stop all of that white space and contain it. I don't know, there's just something very satisfying about it. So if ever you're at that point of creating a layout and you feel the same way, uh, try doing that. Try matting it on a darker piece of cardstock or adding a doodle border. Um, it always makes me feel like, yes, now I can be done with this. And then on top of my doodles, I am adding um, a little something I learned from watching Katie Taylor over at Scrap and Katie. She calls these her heart strings and it's really cute. You just kind of make what looks like a heart or like two bow ties and then some little squiggles going out from either side. Um, and it's just like a fun little touch on top of the doodle. And that is it. This layout actually came together fairly quickly. Um, and I was so excited to cut into my Daisy Daisy paper pack. Like I said, I will leave links in the description box down below to everything that is available. Um, this is a special that runs through the end of March. Sometimes the papers or things are available after the end of a special, but it's never a guarantee. So if this is something that is calling your name, I would run right on over there before it is all gone. All right, guys, thank you so much for being here and watching today. I really appreciate it. Have a great day. Happy crafting. Bye.